The other thing that a lot of women don't understand is that heart disease goes up almost 400% when a woman enters the menopausal years. Because once the natural estrogen, which is really the fountain of youth hormone, there's no question about that. I mean, it, it causes an enormous impact on what we call the endothelium of blood vessels. It keeps them nice and smooth and glistening and stuff like that. But once that estrogen seems to, to wane, uh, then her incidence of heart disease goes up. And again, as a heart specialist, I saw that frequently in my practice. I bet. And not many cardiologists are tuned into um, bioidentical hormones that I'm aware of. Uh, so um, I've always admired your approach to um, the heart and health and hormones and natural uh, natural approaches to all of these things. That's why I think you're so popular at the anti-aging conferences. Yeah, I, I just gave a lecture on CoQ10 for two hours two days ago, and I'm wow. still getting over it. I had to sit and talk to a computer for two hours in one spot. And I'll wow. tell you, that's hard. That's hard, especially when you're doing Q&A on a computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how much CoQ10 are you recommending for people to take daily? You know, in this day and age, it's toxic day and age, and especially with COVID, uh, I used to say 100 of the high-quality, bioavailable, you know, CoQ10. Now I'm thinking closer to 200, uh, especially in people in our age group, you know. Oh. Uh, anybody oh. over the age of 50, though, should take 100 milligrams. And I used to say 50, but now I've doubled it because of, of COVID. By the way, while we're on CoQ10, it's just absolutely amazing. But what CoQ10 does, it supports endothelial cell function. In other words, it supports that endothelial cell lining of the blood vessel. And what COVID-19 does, it causes enormous endothelial cell dist destruction because of the A2, ACE2 receptor where the virus locks into the ACE2 receptor and it causes you know, hemorrhagic uh, uh, clotting and, and things like that inside the blood vessel. But CoQ10, because it supports endothelial cell function, and listen to this, Drew, this is amazing. CoQ10 lowers C-reactive protein, NF-kappa-B, and interleukin-6. These are the inflammatory cytokines that create the, the cytokine storm that causes all this hemorrhage and blood clotting in the lung. So if you take CoQ10, you're preventing that inflammatory cytokine storm. And somebody's going to do this research within the next year or two showing that CoQ10 could be, and this is my opinion, you know, could be uh, something that is very, very substantial against COVID-19. I, I also, um, you know, the way I describe CoQ10, because I, I break down everything to be very base, is that if for a bunch of cells, if, that, if that's what a human being is, and inside each cell, the, the membrane is made from uh, protein, fat, and carbohydrate, but in the inside is the mitochondria, the energy center, at, and it's fed by CoQ10 as we get older and are depleted in CoQ10. Um, I look at CoQ10, if you're on an outboard motorboat, as the ripcord, right, that gets the mitochondria, i.e. the energy, revved up. But without it, you don't have anything that's going to get your energy uh, to operate at optimum. And that, I think, is why as we see older people, you know, walking around all bent over, they have no energy. Energy is life. And so CoQ10 is vital to life, in my estimation. Absolutely. You couldn't have said it clearer. Right, Drew? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think both things that we're talking about today, CoQ10, hormones, they, they both build vitality. 